and welcome to this channel's one and only podcast. I'm Annabelle Gorman, and today we'll be talking about Catcher in the Rye and its mysterious linkages to multiple murder and murder attempts. I'm going to be analyzing why murderers identify with Catcher in the Rye, and specifically with the main character, Holden Caulfield. Throughout this episode, we'll be considering a few questions. Why was Catcher in the Rye important in these murders? And what about Holden drew these murderers in? Today, I'll be focusing in on three murders and murder attempts where Catcher in the Rye played a role. The first is Mark David Chapman, who shot and killed John Lennon in 1980. The second is John Hinckley, who attempted to kill Ronald Reagan in 1981. And the last is Robert John Bardo, who killed TV actress Rebecca Schaefer in 1989. All three of these men struggled with abuse and depression when they were young and saw these murders as something that would better and change their lives. Holden was like them. He was depressed and anxious throughout the book, and he was different from everyone around him. These things probably made Holden a very relatable character for them and someone they could connect with. Mark David Chapman grew up in an abusive home and was bullied at school as a child. In high school, he struggled with drug abuse and started hallucinating due to mental issues. As a young adult, his mental issues got worse, and he attempted suicide. He was lonely, and he felt like he didn't belong, but he found solace in Holden. While Chapman was living in Hawaii, he even asked to have his name legally changed to Holden Caulfield. He believed that Holden would have killed John Lennon because he was a, quote, phony, and so he wanted to do the same. Chapman believed he would become Holden after he shot Lennon. After he shot Lennon, he immediately sat down and read The Catcher in the Rye until the police caught him. At his trial, he even used a quote from Catcher in the Rye in his defense. The quote that he used was about Holden describing what a Catcher in the Rye is and why he wanted to be a Catcher in the Rye. It is unclear why this quote is defense to his actions or how this quote relates to his trial. Next is John Hinckley. John Hinckley grew up in a well-to-do family, and his father was a successful businessman. Hinckley had a seemingly normal childhood, but in high school he became more and more reserved, and as a young adult he bought his first gun and started relying on antidepressants and sedatives. At this time, he also became infatuated with actress Jodie Foster after seeing the movie Taxi Driver. In 1980, Hinckley began stalking her while she was a student at Yale University, and he called her repeatedly. He thought that he could impress her and gain her attention by killing the president. So, in 1981, he attempted to kill Reagan. His main inspiration for attempting to kill Reagan was Taxi Driver and his obsession with Jodie Foster, although Catcher in the Rye was also present. The book was one of only half a dozen books Hinckley had in his house and was sitting on his coffee table when they searched his home. Although he had never o- he never openly talked about Catcher in the Rye, the fact that it was one of the only few books in his house shows that he read it and liked it. He must have connected to Holden in a similar way to Chapman. Hinckley felt like an outsider, and to him, Holden was just like him. Finally, Robert John Bardo was raised in an abusive household and attempted suicide as a teen. Because of these issues at home, he was moved into foster care temporarily, and at the age of 15, he was institutionalized due to what they called, quote, emotional issues. He dropped out of high school and was arrested three times on charges of domestic abuse and disorderly conduct. He, like John Hinckley, became obsessed with an actress. He began stalking TV actress Rebecca Schaefer in 1986. At his trial, it became clear that the song Exit was his main inspiration. He apparently started mouthing the words to the line, quote, pistol weighing heavy, end quote, at his trial when they played the song as evidence. On the night he killed Rebecca Schaefer, he brought Catcher in the Rye with him, and as he ran away from the scene, he threw his book down. He seemed to be emulating Chapman. He might have also felt a connection to Chapman because in 1988, A year before he killed Schaefer, he visited the spot in New York where Chapman shot Ledin. These men all struggled with depression, nonconformity, and suicidal thoughts. Holden struggles with all the same problems through the course of the book. 
Holden felt like disappearing and felt like nobody cared. When he was walking around New York, he described feeling as though, quote, Every time I came to the end of the block and stepped off the goddamn curve, I had this feeling that I would never get to the other side of the street. I thought I'd just go down, 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 and nobody'd ever see me again, end quote. John Hinckley, just like Holden, felt like he didn't mean anything in the world, like he was disappearing. He attempted to kill Reagan to get attention and to be famous so that Jodie Foster would pay attention to him. Chapman and Bardo were also depressed and most likely felt similar to Holden at this moment in the book. Holden also brings up thoughts of suicide multiple times in the book. When he is in his hotel room after having an encounter with Sonny and Maurice, he says, quote, What I really felt like, though, was committing suicide. I felt like jumping out of the window. I probably would have done it, too, if I'd been sure somebody'd cover me up as soon as I'd landed. I didn't want a bunch of rubbernecks looking at me all gory, end quote. Both Chapman and Bardo attempted suicide, and Hinckley had many suicidal thoughts. Hinckley even considered committing suicide in front of Jodie Foster to get her attention. Finally, Holden did not fit in or conform, and he had a strong dislike for people who did. The people he called phonies, which is a word he used 48 times throughout the book, were people who had grown up and conformed. Holden didn't want to grow up and conform, so he felt distant from these people. He calls many people phonies, and when he is talking about the private schools he attended before Pensy, he says, quote, One of the biggest reasons I left Elkton Hills was because I was surrounded by phonies, end quote. Chapman, Hinckley, and Bardo did not conform, and they considered others as phonies. Chapman's reasoning behind killing Lennon is because, in his eyes, Lennon was a phony. Now, to give a professional explanation on what might be going on in the minds of these murderers, we'll be having Dr. John Smith, a criminal psychologist from St. Andrews University in Scotland. Hi, Dr. Smith. Hi, uh, thanks for having me. Thanks for coming. The first thing I wanted to ask you is what can you tell us about the impact of literature on crim criminal minds? Of course. So, reading aggression in literature can actually influence aggressive behavior. When you think about violent video games today and the effect that they could have on today's children, it's really quite similar with literature. And I'm not saying that the catcher in the rye caused the aggressive behavior, behavior in these murders, but I definitely think that taboo subjects talked about in the catcher of the rye like depression, suicide, and nonconformity were definitely things that these men could relate to. Interesting. So, Holden never act homicidal or violent towards others in the book, so why do you think Chapman, Hinckley, and Bardo related with him so much? These men didn't just act homicidal. Um, they harmed themselves and struggled with depression. They didn't relate with Holden on a violent level, but on an emotional level instead. Well, thanks for coming, Dr. Smith, and thanks for giving us all some insight on this topic. That's all for this episode. Thanks for tuning in.